Hi, I'm Ed Chung, and I'm cre again I'm uh, internist, internal medicine physician, but also have have Meniere's disease, and I'm creating these multiple series of videos over the last few months to try to help others with Meniere's disease cope with the disease and understand their disease. Um, so this video I'm doing is actually discussing sort of the long-term course of Meniere's disease um, from a review article that's looked at multiple, multiple patients over 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And, um, you know, in the past, uh, you know, I've read multiple, multiple different articles about the long-term course of Meniere's disease, but now with the new progression I've had with, uh, with the disease going bilateral for me and with progression of dis deafness and tinnitus, I started rereading the old articles and also started looking for research, you know, researching new articles. And so this video is actually the summary of probably the best and most detailed article out there about the long-term course of Meniere's disease over 15 to 20 years. Um, you can actually click on the link below for more details, and it's written out. Um, and you can actually probably Google it and pull up the whole article itself if you want to read it. Um, but here's sort of the summary. Uh, the article is actually uh, from June of 2010. Uh, it's like, I think it's like 20 pages or so. It's from the Acta Otolangalia. Um, talking about the long-term course of Meniere's disease revisited from a German professor. And Germans actually do some of the best research for uh, medical diseases. And what the paper basically did was it, it went back and reviewed 46 retrospective studies with a total of 7,852 patients. Um, and what they did was they looked at all these different retrospective studies with multiple, multiple patients, and he summarized all the results. Um, and they threw out all studies with less than 25 patients. They threw out studies that had inconsistent procedures or studies or results. And they threw out no, um, studies that did, had no real true specific follow-up. And so, uh, so this is actually a very, very well done review article. Um, and the bottom line is that they looked at five different categories uh, and followed along over the long-term course of, of Meniere's disease. They looked at, number one, the frequency of vertigo attacks and how it affected over over time. It looked at two, the, the impairment loss or the amount of loss, objective loss of vestibular balance function. Okay. Number three, it looked at the amount and the qual quality and quantity of the hearing loss over time. Four, it looked at the occurrence of drop attacks over time. And number five, it, it looked at the involvement of bilateral uh, uh, ears and bilateral Meniere's disease. So it, it first started out, I mean, I'm not gonna go through again the details of what Meniere's disease is, you should be looking, you've got prior videos to look at, you look this up on the internet. But it did look, it did start out with looking at the incidence of Meniere's disease, again, through all the different studies, and it showed that there was a range of either between 10 to up to 150 persons per 100,000. So it's called the incident rate um, of Meniere's disease. Um, oh, and then they looked at the lifetime prevalence of Meniere's disease, meaning that over a lifetime of, of everyone's life uh, total, um, there's probably about a half percentage of 0.5% chance of maybe developing some sort of form of Meniere's disease or symptoms of Meniere's disease. And the goal was to quantify the long-term course over 5, five 10, 15, 20 years of Meniere's disease on the, these five measures. So, um, on, on, on the first, and so, you know, I did summarize the article, but I'm just going to go through the highlights. Uh, so, so, looking at Meniere's disease over over 20 years, 5, 10, 20 years, um, looking at the frequency of uh, vertigo attacks. That was the first category they really looked at and reviewed. So what they found was that the average mean, average mean or, or, or the middle number of frequency attacks per year over the, over the first three years of a person having Meniere's disease, the average number of attacks um, per month were approximately 4.5, okay? Um, Actually, sorry, no, 4.5 per year. Um, uh, one large study found that there was a continuous decrease of attacks from the eighth year on. Okay, at about 15 to 15 years, about 50% of patients had no attacks, uh, no vertigo attacks, and about 28% had improvement of the vertigo attacks. Okay, at the f another study looked at at the 14 year mark. There was. Um, they looked at how whether the overall Meniere's disease was better or worse, and actually what was surprising was that they found that 17% of patients versus, uh, at the 14-year mark um, were actually worse off compared to about 10% were worse off at the 10-year at the mark. 
And the reason for that was not because of the vertigo attacks, it was, be, was because the Menierzes went bilateral, developed bilateral Menierzes. Um, there's a certain percentage of patients with no vertigo. Uh, one study did show that a, a percent with a, a certain percent, a small percentage of patients had no vertigo increased with time. Um, while another one showed that it did increase for vertigo in time. So the, so the different studies were somewhat inconsistent. And this is how all studies are, depending on how many patients they looked at and, and, and um, what they were trying to target. Um, but what basically the bottom line is, on, uh, with the larger studies, it showed that 18% at, that of patients in year one increased to about 60% in year 10 um, had um, decreasing amounts of vertigo attacks with time. Okay. However, what it did, another study, and the same study also did show was that more severe, the more severe and the longer the vertigo attacks were um, on the initial presentation or the initial first year to thir first to third year of Meniere's disease, the more likely uh, the Meniere's disease would be worse later on in, in the stages. So what happens, you start out at a very, very high well, very poor, sorry, very low level of, of functioning and very severity, uh, high severity of disease. And then what happens is longer period of time, it dies down, drops down, but the severity, because it was so high in the beginning, continues to be severe later on in, in, in the time course. And what it showed is basically with all the different retrospective studies they reviewed, later in the disease, uh, like 20 years, the vertigo may worsen again um, after multiple years of being quiet. So... The bottom line, as far as the vertigo attacks, what they, they found was vertigo attacks, very severe in the beginning, first for one to three years, sort of quiesces, quiets down, calms down. About 60% of patients, year 10, doing, doing fine, doing better. Then year 15 to 20, it can ramp up again. It may ramp up again, get worse again. But a lot of times that worsening is because the Meniere's disease goes to the opposite ear. Okay, so... I mean, think of it this way. That's sort of a, a good thing. I mean, it, it's 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 hopeful for everyone, because that is the most impairing thing of it, of, of Meniere's disease. So the second thing it looked for was looking at impairment or loss of vestibular or balance function. Um, they looked at objective caloric testing (ENG) studies, um, and it basically showed decreased that the decreased response or a positive ENG study seemed to correlate with the severity of Meniere's disease, which makes sense. So the more imbalance or de decreased function that Meniere's disease caused of your inner ear, the worse your Meniere's disease was. Uh, the caloric excitability or response deteriorates most rapidly in the first one to three years. However, uh, and then on average, the residual function is somewhere between 35 to 50 percent. Okay. Uh, however, some patients continue to worsen and continue to decline, but most patients sort of level off around 30, losing about 35 to 50 percent of their their balance center on that one side whenever they have the Meniere's disease. What, what's interesting is that the de decreased function is not correlated with the severity, um, but is positively correlated with the frequency. What this means is the severity of your vertigo attack. Some people just get a little nausea. Some people get full, like just so severe nausea that lasts forever and, and, and lasts for like days and, and they're just incapacitated. The severity is not correlated with the decreased function but the frequency, how often you're getting the attacks, are correlated with that, okay? Um, in the bottom line of the vestibular function, objectively, from year one to year 20, what they found was that the results are very unpredictable individually. From one person to the other, you cannot tell individually, but as a group, over 7,800 patients, um, what it generally does show is that there's decreased function of, 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 of your vestibular inner ear, um, which is a sign of sort of, quote, burnout of the Meniere's disease. Okay. So the third big thing um, that, the, they, that the study really looked at and, and objectively tried to follow over 20, 30 years um, was the amount and quality or quantity of hearing loss. And this is more dear to my heart because my primary symptoms, I do have the vertigo, but my primary symptoms are the hearing loss. I mean, I've got these bilateral hearing aids right now that, and I've got like half my hearing loss probably on the right and 30, 20, 30, 40 percent on the left. So the amount of hearing will deteriorate over time. It's found that all, pretty much all the patients with Meniere's disease have hearing loss, okay? 
The majority of the loss occurs, again, just like the vertigo and, and the vestibular balance loss in the first few years of Menierzy's, but they found that the hearing loss is a little bit, unlike the balance loss is really acute over the first one to three years, the hearing loss is a little bit more declining-like nature over the first five years. Okay, The correlation of vestibular to hearing loss is, is somewhat mixed, but there is a correlation. Uh, about 50 to 60 percent of patients will have increased loss, especially over the first five years, or for between year one and year five. Okay, the earlier 40 percent of patients had approximately um, 20 to 30 decibel fluctuating loss to progress in time to about 80 percent had about a 50 percent 50 decibel loss um, over 15 20 years. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, uh, I'm going to pull up my, my my hearing studies. Okay. So this is my, my left ear, this is the, my right ear, this is the ear that I had bad, uh, very severe badness on. And um, you could see actually the severity of loss, mild is, is, is considered 30 decibel loss. Uh, severe, moderate severe is actually 50 decibel loss, the 60 decibel loss. And so that's sort of where my hearing loss is, okay. Um, the right ear that I've got um, is showing about a 20 to 30 decibel loss. On, on, on the, the left ear, sorry, the, my, the, my quote good ear, now that it's gone bilaterally. Um, after 20 years, almost all patients had at least a 30 decibel hearing loss, which is considered mo mo a moderate amount of loss. Both high and fro low frequency losses are affected equally with time. Okay, The early stages or low frequency loss in about 50% suggest a better prognosis and slightly less hearing loss in the future. Uh, a flat hearing loss, however, increases over 15 years from 20% to 75%. Okay, so I know those those numbers sound all confusing, but the bottom line, what it's saying is that most patients, there's sort of a classic uh, low frequency hearing loss in the beginning, and then over time, this low frequency hearing loss, low frequency down here, actually flattens out, and so you have actually just a flat. Um, just universal hearing loss um, in most patients, okay? Um, and they did actually sort of try to look at tinnitus and the ringing in the ears. There was, the studies were all very, very inconclusive. Um, but in general, as I said, if you looked at my prior videos, the tinnitus is so much correlated with the amount of hearing loss, but not even just that, it's the amount of the way the body sort of compensates for the hearing loss, okay? Um, so number four, the fourth thing they really looked at was occurrence of drop attacks. Now drop attacks are a little different than the vertigo attacks. Drop attacks are, are when you're just walking along and suddenly vertigo hits, not even vertigo, you suddenly drop to the floor because you have absolutely lost your complete balance. Now what drop attacks are a result are from sudden mechanical deformation of your inner ear. So remember you have your inner ear, your balance centers. What happens is the such high pressure and it thins out the membranes of your inner ear, and then the whole complex of your balance centers deform. It collapses down. Now, um, and what happens is it's thought to be from deformation of the otolithic membrane, secondary to the pressure gradient in the ear. It, it, it's found that about three to seven percent of patients with Meniere's disease will develop these drop attacks, um, and will have them uh, in a, within about 10 years of having the disease but they're usually a, a formation in the later stage manifestations between three to 20 years later. They're not in the early manifestations. So the longer you have in years, the more thinning of the membrane, the higher the chance of that membrane, of that whole complex, inner ear balance complex, collapsing down and, and causing drop attacks. And there was no difference between auditory or vestibular function. Um, however, what they did find was that over time, these drop attacks diminish. Um, they can occur, but and it's relatively low, three to 5%. 3 to 7 percent, but they diminish with time, and they are usually controllable with gentamicin injections. They, it's, what happens is you destroy the nerve uh, irritation, and it gets better. And so the, the, so the last thing that, that the study really looked at was the involvement of bilateral meniers. Um, it's diagnosed by audio, audiometry and symptoms. It's highly variable incidence in studies between anywhere 2 percent up to 50 percent, 47 percent. Okay. Um, only 2% of patients had bilateral meniers on initial presentation. However, as time goes on, the incidence of bilateral meniers disease goes all the way up. Um, if the disease goes bilateral, this will usually occur within the first five years, okay, um, anywhere between 10 to 35% in all the studies. 
And at 10 years, um, one large study actually showed that about 45 to 50% of patients do have bilateral meniere's Average incidence, however, overall is about 35%, about one third, and again, increases with duration of meniere's disease. About two thirds of the patients gave identical audiograms for both ears, meaning that the, the hearing studies on both ears were about the same, um, but more severe for bilateral disease. And with time, usually people see more improvement with the first ear. So like, for example, I developed meniere's in my right ear, that improves a little bit better more than the deterioration of the opposite ear. Um, so the bottom line for this study, um, this review study, is that still there's no validated clinical test for manure, diagnosing meniere's so a true diagnosis is somewhat variable. However, given the large number of the, 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 that this, this paper looked at over multiple studies, you know, 7,800 patients, this, re, re, this review gives the most probable long-term prognosis or, or looking at what will happen with the meniere's disease. Um, it seems like meniere's has two phases. It has an acute phase, it has an acute phase with severe acute symptoms of the first three to five years, then a stabilization, and then a burnout from five to 20 years. But the longer one has meniere's the more highly the likelihood of contralateral involvement, again, 30 to 50% with time. Um, so I hope that helps everyone understand your, the meniere's over long term. Thank you.